What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to start to dive deep into Django. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to dive really deeply into Django, learn absolutely everything there is to know. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Wednesday here in Vegas, and I've decided from now on, on Wednesdays, we're going to do Django. And we're really, really going to dive very deeply into Django. I've got some other playlists on Django you can check out on the channel if you want to sort of get a head start. They're a lot different than what we're going to do here. Those use class-based views. We're going to use functional-based views. And But more specifically, we're going to dive very deeply into Django. I'm not just going to build websites and stuff, though we are going to build a website. Uh, I'm going to explain the very like ins and outs. We're going to get really into it. And at the end of this playlist, you're going to really master Django. You're going to know everything there is to know, hopefully, and it should be a lot of fun. So every Wednesday here on the channel, Django Wednesday. So what we're going to do is build like a social club website where you can have events, you can add your events, you can add venues, you can have calendars and things for different things that are going to happen. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to let us learn all kinds of cool stuff. People will be able to sign up for the website. People will be able to log in, log out, create their own events, add their own venues, remove their venues. Uh, do all the things and it's going to be a lot of fun. So in this video, we're just going to sort of get started really quickly, install Django. Since my last Django playlist, there's been an update to Django. Django 3 is out and there's some different features we need to talk about. We'll get into all that in the coming Wednesdays. But uh, for now, we're just going to install this thing and build a very quick first website. But before we do that, I've got this free Django guide that I made a while back. And we can check it out. It's at codemy.com forward slash Django dash terminal dash commands dash ebook. And this is completely free. There's nothing to sign up for. You don't have to add your email address, anything at all. It's just a PDF version. And you can come down here and click on this download the book here link. And when you do, let me see, we get this PDF guide. And it's it's not very long. It's 24, 25 pages. But this just has a bunch of different commands that you're going to be using, especially early on in Django to create a project, spin it up, do certain things that all Django projects usually have. So it's sort of a, a quick sheet, a quick tips guide of uh, commands that you're going to need. So if you want to download this, you can. If you want to just come to the website and read it, you can. If you want to print it out and keep it, you can. It's just a handy little guide uh, to have. So for this project, I'm going to be using, as always, the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal. If you don't have the Git Bash Terminal, it is at git-scm.com. Uh, and you can download that for free. A Sublime Text is obviously sublimetext.com. It's completely free too. Uh, you can use the trial version or whatever. I think you could pay for it if you want to, but you don't have to. If you're using something else like Visual Studio Code or PyCharm, you could maybe follow along. I recommend that you don't, especially if you're a newer coder, because those tools can give you problems. And it's no big deal if you know what you're doing, but if you're watching these videos, chances are you don't know what you're doing. And it's just easier to use the tools that I'm going to use. That way, if you have a problem, you can tell me in the comment section below these videos and I can help you out. If you're using Visual Studio Code or PyCharm, I can't help you out because I'm not using those tools. So use whatever tools you want to use, but these are the tools that I'm going to use. And if you want to follow along, it's probably easiest if you do that. So, okay, let's head over to our Git Bash terminal. And if I type in PWD, it shows I'm in the C slash user slash Codemy directory. Codemy is my Windows logged in username. Yours will obviously be something else. It doesn't matter what directory you're in because we're going to create a new directory. So let's create a directory to hold our entire project. Let's go MKDIR. Now we want to put this in the C drive and let's call this, um, I don't know, my club website. And just my club. Yeah, just my club. Hit enter. Now we can move into that directory by using the CD command, stands for change directory. And we want to go C my club. And you can see now we're in the my club directory. If I type the ls command to list the stuff in that directory, there's nothing there. So the first thing we always want to do with Django and really just about any Python project is create a virtual environment. So to do that, we type Python dash M and then VENV stands for virtual environment. And now we just name this thing. And I usually name these things vert stands for virtual and hit enter it usually takes a couple of seconds. If you're on Mac, it may be Python three dash M vim vert. 
If you get an error here that says permission is denied, it means you didn't install Python correctly. Go back, reinstall Python. And on the very first installation screen, there's a little checkbox at the bottom that says add Python 3 point whatever to path. Make sure that's checked. Go ahead and install Python. Come back here, restart your Git Bash terminal and it should work. So, okay, our virtual environment has been installed. We type in ls, we can see now we've got this vert directory in there and that's good. So now to turn this on, we just type in source vert scripts and then activate. And you can see now there's this vert on top of the, uh, the command prompt. That means our virtual environment has been turned on. We can turn it off by typing deactivate. And you can see now it's gone. So I'll turn it back on again. If you're on a Mac, I think the command is source bin activate, I think, or source bin vert activate, something like that. If that doesn't work, you're just gonna have to Google how to turn on a Vimb. B E N V with Mac, but I think that's the command. So now this thing has, turned, has been turned on. We can type in pip freeze to see what Python things have been installed in our virtual environment. And we can see it returns nothing because there's nothing installed in our virtual environment. There are no Python y things in there. And we definitely need some. We need at least Django. So let's go pip install Django. Now this will install the latest version of Django. If you want to install a specific version, you can go equal, equal you know, 2.1.8 or whatever, whatever version you want. We just want the latest version so we can hit enter. It's going to collect a whole bunch of stuff, not just Django, but also this ass giraffe thing, the SQL parse thing, and this PyTZ thing. PyTZ is a Py, Python time zone thing, deals with time zone stuff. And uh, okay, we're good to go there. So let's clear the screen and let's go pip freeze to see what's been installed now. And we can see there's Django version 3.1.5. If it's a different version of Django by the time you watch this video, no big deal, you should be okay. Usually there aren't major changes unless it changes the first number. So if we're on Django version four, then it might be different. It likely will be different, but anything up until four, you should be okay watching these videos. Even four may be okay. I don't know what changes they're gonna do in four, but it's probably a year or two at least before we get to four because they just released three a couple of months ago. So you can see we're on 3.1, right? So we're at the very beginning of the three cycle. So you should be okay. So, okay, we got a bunch of stuff here and uh, we're pretty much ready to go now. So let's create our project. So to do that, we just go Django-admin.py and then start project. And then we just name our project. And I don't know, let's call this my club, I don't know, website, <laughs> whatever. Now, if this command doesn't work for you, try it without the pi. So it would be like, like that. For some reason, some people have to do that. I've never really figured out why, but for some people that works if the first one doesn't work. So now we could type in ls and we can see we've got this my club underscore website. So let's go ahead and move into that directory. So let's cd and we can go into my club website, right? So we can see we're in that directory now. Close the screen and we can list the stuff in this directory and we can see this manage.py file. Now, if you know anything about Django, you know the manage.py file is super important and it's the, the thing we're gonna be using to run all of our Django commands from here on out. So let's go ahead and run the server really quick and just see if our project was sort of installed correctly. And to do that, we go Python manage.py run server. And you can see it's, it's waiting for a thing. Now to access our website, we pull up a web browser now and we just go to localhost colon 8000 and hopefully we see this little Django rocket ship kind of shaking around a little bit. And if you see this, congratulations, you've installed Django correctly and everything's working as it should be. So now let's open up Sublime Text and let's go to project, add folder to project. And when we do, we can navigate to our C directory, right? over here or wherever, and then just find that directory we created earlier. And that's my club. And inside of there is the my club website. So you can double click on it or just select it like this. You can see here's our virtual environment and then click select folder. And when we do, boom, boom, it pops up here and we're good to go. So these are all the files we have so far, which is not much, but that's cool. Now we can come back over to our terminal here and hit control C to break out of this. Now, anytime you want your website to run locally, that server needs to be running. So you can see we just broke out of that server. It's not running anymore. So if we go back over to our web browser, you'll notice if I hit reload, 
we get an error, unable to connect. That's because the server's not there, so the website won't work anymore. So just sort of keep that in mind. Anytime you want the website to work, you have to run this command right here. I usually keep two of these git bash terminals open whenever I'm doing Django work, and I just keep the server running in one in the background, and then I have the other one open that I can run commands on. So if you're gonna be working a lot, like many hours at a time, you don't wanna keep turning the server off and on every time you wanna use it, so you might just do that. Okay, so now let's create a new app in our project. So, you know, with Django, anytime you create something separate in your project, that's a new app. So we wanna build a, a website, and that sort of website will be its own app. And then we'll add that to our project and go from there. So we're gonna build this sort of social club and you're gonna be able to add your own events. So I'm gonna have a party in the park. I can add that event and that venue to our social club website and let everybody know about it, right? So the thing we want to be able to do is create events. So I'm gonna create an app for events. So to do that, we just call Python manage.py. And again, if you're on a Mac and these commands don't work, try Python 3. So you would type Python 3 manage.py. The reason that is is because Macs, at least used to and probably still do, come with a very old version of Python 2. So if you have to install the newest version of Python, Python 3, to use it, you have to type Python 3. But that's just if you're on a Mac or Linux and you're having problems. Okay, so Python manage.py, we want to start app and then name it. I'm just gonna call this events. So when we do, boom, we can now type ls and we see there's an events directory. If we head over to our sublime text and then come up here to project and refresh folders, boom, our events folder pops in. Now, it may have just popped up into your sublime text. It usually does, but for some reason I had to refresh it, come down here and click refresh, and you can see now it pops up. So now these are all the files in our new app and you can see there's a views.py, test models, apps.py, and the first thing we always want to do when we create a new app inside of our project is come back to our main app, my club website, and click the settings.py. And I always get rid of these comments, so let me just take those out. And then come down here to installed apps and add that app to the list. So to do that, we just type in the name of it, so events, right? Now I stick a comma at the end of it just for good measure. Go ahead and save that, control S to save it, or come up here and click file, save. And that's really all there is to it. So now let's very quickly build out a first web page for our new events app. So to do that, first we need to set the URL. So let's come to our original my club website slash urls.py file and get rid of all these comments. So annoying. And we need to come up here and we need to add include because we're gonna include the urls.py file from our new app into this app. And to do that, we come down here and we type in path and this, these are single quotes and there's nothing in here, not even a space. You can see it's just, just empty because we want the root URL to point somewhere else. Where, where do we want it to point? We want it to point to include. And then what do we want to include? Well, we want to include events.urls, right? And I'm put a comma at the end of this. You don't really need to. So now we need to actually create this file in our events app, right? So if we come over here to our events app, You'll notice there is no urls.py file. So I can right click on events and click new file and it pops up. Then I can go file save as urls.py. And there it is if we close it. And for some reason this isn't refreshing so I'll refresh this again. Probably time to restart my computer or something. But uh, you can see boom it pops up. Now it's empty so let's come to our original urls.py file down here and let me just copy all of this stuff and let's paste it into the new file, right? So we don't need this admin thing, and we don't need this include thing, but we do need this path thing. And we also don't need this URL, and this one will look a little bit different, so let's change this. So we want our root URL, our www.whatever.com slash nothing, that's why there's nothing in there, to point to views.home, and then let's give this a name of home. So this will point to the home function or method, whatever you want to call it, in our views.py file, which is right here. All right. So let's come back here and let's save this. And now let's head over to our urls.py file and let's create that function. So let's define home and we want to pass in request. 
And here, let's just return render request. And then we want to point this to home.html, which we haven't created yet. And we also want to pass a context dictionary, which we'll talk about in a bit. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. Now, this home.html file needs to be created, and we create that in our templates directory. But we don't have a templates directory just yet. So, let's again head over to our events directory, right click and create new folder. And down here we can name it. So, let's name it templates. And when we do, it should pop right up here, but it didn't. So, again, let's go to project and refresh folders. And there it is. So, now I can right click and create new file. And inside of here, I can create that whatever. But first, let's save it. So file save as, and let's call this home.html. Again, it didn't pop right up, so we'll go to project refresh. That's really annoying. I'll restart my computer and that'll change in the next video. We won't have to keep refreshing every time. But for now, let's just create an H1 tag. And let's say hello world. And let's close our H1 tag. Let's go ahead and save this. So now we've got the three things that you need to create a website or a web page in Django. We have a URL, which is right here. It's pointing to the view, which is our views.py, which is right here. Inside of that, we have our home function, We're passing in request. And then finally, we have this home.html, which is a template in our templates file. It's the third thing, and that should be good to go. So now if we head back over to our terminal here, and let's go python manage.py. It's always python manage.py. And again, we want to run the server. So when we do that, uh oh, name views is not defined. Ooh, we forgot one thing. In our urls.py file, we need to import that view. So let's go from period import views. So this period means, hey, from this directory, which is this events directory, which the urls.py file is sitting in. From this directory, import views, right? Which is our views.py file right here, because we need to use that right there, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here, uh, break out of here. Let's run this thing again, python manage.py. Okay, no errors there. We head back over to the website and let's hit reload and boom, it says hello world. And we're good to go. So, that's how to install Django in just seconds. You just pip install Django to install it after you've created your virtual environment. Super, super simple. Spinning up your first project is as simple as Django-admin.py, start project, name the project. And so it's just that easy to create your first Django project. So this is a very, very basic website, obviously, but would it take less than five minutes to really set all this stuff up? We installed Django in just seconds, right? We created a virtual environment, then we pip installed Django and boom, it's installed. And that's really, really cool. Other things like Ruby on Rails take forever to install. This is just easy and it just works. And then it just takes a couple of minutes to create your first web page. All right, so like I said, every Wednesday from now on for the next, I don't know, three months, six months, however long this takes, we are gonna do Django Wednesday and we're really gonna dive in here. In this video, obviously we didn't get very deep into anything, but we're just setting things up and getting things started. In the next video, we'll jump right into massive database work. We'll start by creating our events table, our venues table, our members table. We'll do all kinds of crazy stuff. We'll talk about it in great detail. And this should be a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to this. I hope you guys are too. If you watched my last Django playlist on building a blog, this one will be in much greater detail. And we're really gonna dive in there and learn just absolutely everything we can about Django because Django is a lot of fun, right? It's really easy to use. It's, it's super useful and it's becoming more and more popular every day. So. It's really, really cool to see the community growing with it. And uh, this should be a lot of fun. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on memberships. It pays $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. I'm doing over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.